Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about OVW. So you're getting up and running here. The early class, man, goodness gracious, Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Batista, Randy Orton. Was this just right time, right place? I mean, you want to talk about an all-star cast yeah. who deserves some of the credit for helping. I mean, I, I think we know that, that you and Brucey both saw John Cena uh, out in, in California and right. I think you and Briscoe had, had Lesnar on your radar, but these guys are coming from far and wide and they couldn't wind up in more capable hands based on the results. I mean, they speak for themselves. Do they not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, uh, they do. We, it, the, uh, various sources, uh, there was not one specific way that we got prospects, you know, the Lesnar stories, what it is, uh, you know, Gerald and I started recruiting Brock Lesnar when he was a junior in college at the university of Minnesota. Uh, you know, we made a deal with the head coach that we wouldn't sign because Brock would have signed right after his junior year. If we had gone for it, uh, I gave my word, uh, through Gerald. And Jay Robinson was a coach in Minnesota. He was a, he was a teammate at Oklahoma state in the wrestling team with uh, Jerry. So I, I had, uh, motivated or wanted to motivate Jerry just to, to, to live with this kid. Cause we can't miss on him. We got to get him. And once people would realize we're recruiting him and we thought that he was going to, you know, he was favored to win the NCAA national championship as a heavyweight the best heavyweight in the college wrestling at any level. Uh, you know, we made a deal with Jay Robinson that we would not sign Brock because Brock wanted money. Brock wanted money right away. And he was tired of being broke. Uh, I think he was probably getting tired of the, the, tr- the camps and the, and the, the training and the practices and being in school and structured situation that wasn't his idea of a good time. Uh, Bruce and I both saw John Cena working for, uh, Rick Bassman, uh, out there in LA area, Southern California. And, uh, he's just, uh, he was a can't miss guy. He's the guy that I, I, I took a red eye back from, uh, California and told Vince, I said, I just saw the guy that's going to headline WrestleMania in about five years. And I think he thought I was high or something. Uh, I just had that belief that John Cena was it, that was, uh, was it. Then you look at guys like, uh, Batista, well, you know, his look alone, you talk about turning heads in airports, you know, he had turned heads in a, in a school for the blind. He was scary looking. And, uh, and, uh, as we have seen in this movie success, a very bright, talented guy who the hell would have known that the Leviathan was, had that, had those acting chops and he did. And he does. I saw him on a preview or on a preview, I guess you'd say of, a, of something here. He's it's out now that he's in and I'm really happy for Dave. He's a real sweetheart of a guy. I remember he, when Jan got killed, uh, not too long after that a few, few months, maybe not even that long. I had Dave on my old podcast and, uh, he cried like a baby. And, uh, of course he made me cry like a baby. That's a sensitive guy. And, you know, Jan was always a, she was always a fan of the talent and, uh, was always there for them no matter what. And then Randy was a little more challenging. I loved his style. I loved his natural aptitude. He was coordinated. You know, he was, he was, he had, I would say he might've been considered to have social issues, but none of those guys I just mentioned didn't, didn't have social issues. They're young, they're green, they're on the road. It's a, you know, it's a, it was a hard, hard thing to, uh, for some of them and that we work with them and sometimes guys get in trouble or they'd have issues. I might write about that in my next book, uh, because they all have happy endings to those stories, but the, but along the way, the journey was a little bit challenging for some guys, women, Conrad, women, what, what's the biggest obstacle? women, if you're heterosexual. Yeah. And most of them were, I believe, but Randy got dis- dishonorably discharged as we know public information from the Marines and events, you know, was one of one of his more ceremonial 
armed forces days, didn't want to hire him. I said, well, you know, he's got a, his grandpa was great. His dad was great. Great for you for many years. This kid's a baby. He is immature. You know, his dad was on the road most of this young man's life. So he didn't have a, a strong father figure always in his home. I said, I believe he deserves a chance. And by the way, boss, didn't you, uh, get some second chances? Uh, cause Vince knew his dad didn't want him to be in the business. We've talked about that. People have talked about that for years. Yeah. Let's let, let's, why don't we give him a chance? I said, he's going to have a contract that has 90 day out. So that means he really has, I can sign him for a five-year contract, but we can get out of it with, uh, uh, 90 days notice. That's, it was typical. That wasn't, oh, these, they're screwing these guys. No, just do your job, work hard, improve, do the right things. And you got a great contract, but if you do do the bed, uh, then, uh, you, 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 we can get rid of you. You gotta have checks and balances. Right. So I think that's what salvaged Randy's uh, career there is. I told Vincent, well, if he doesn't work out, I'll get rid of him. And, uh, I got no problem doing that if I have to, but I don't think we'll ever have to worry about that. We did have to settle some, not settle, but we had to address some issues. But like I said earlier, Conrad, all those guys in that picture, that graphic has had challenges to varying degrees in varying levels of their profession. 